is good, everybody? Nathan Labarda here with Lambo Media, joined by yet another very special guest, the fifth overall draft pick of the most recent 2020 MLB draft, Austin Martin, a former Commodore at Vanderbilt, won a national championship there. Austin, I really appreciate you hopping on. I'm glad we could you know, finally connect and make this interview happen. How have you been doing during these past few weeks, and what's your current baseball status like? What's your day-to-day basis look, looking like as far as baseball goes? Um, well, I recently had just gotten home from the alternate site, uh, located in Rochester, but, uh, uh, not much, man. I'm right now I'm in Nashville and I've just been hanging out, uh, working out, kind of put baseball aside for a little bit, just Good. like I said, kind of active working out and right. just been relaxing. Yeah, and you mentioned you mentioned the alternate site. Uh, what was that whole experience like? What was that whole process like as far as, you know, games and practices go? And what was that whole experience like? Because obviously that's one of your first experiences as far as professional baseball goes. So tell me a little bit about that process and that whole experience. Uh, it was definitely a different baseball experience, just in the sense that we were kind of closed away and from the world in a way that we were just in a hotel and playing baseball, but uh, I thought it was, it was, it was pretty cool. It was interesting. I got to be around a pretty diverse group of guys that obviously have been in the game for a while and had a lot. And so it was, uh, it was really good. I uh, definitely learned a lot and uh, yeah, met, met a lot of great people. Yeah, absolutely. And I mentioned the draft in the intro uh, when we first started. You obviously uh, got selected fifth overall by the Toronto Blue Jays in the most recent 2020 MLB draft. How did you initially find out that, you know, you were selected in the draft? Um, I mean, I didn't know that I was getting selected by Toronto until maybe 10 seconds before my name was called. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it was uh, it was a crazy – Crazy experience, another one too. I mean, you never know how how things are going to work out, but I think things turned out perfectly. So I'm very happy with how things turned out and uh, where I ended up going. And what was your initial reaction when you initially, you know, got that phone call from your agent or however you found out? And what was your initial reaction after, you know, hearing your name called on TV? Um, I mean, it was crazy. I didn't, I didn't know how to feel. Um, it was kind of surreal. Uh, everything that you work for, everything, like, all your dreams kind of, in a sense, coming true. And one night, just hearing your name selected, all the hard work that you put in. So it was, it was definitely great, but in the moment, it didn't really feel real. Yeah, to piggyback off of that, Austin, um, obviously there were projections going around, a ton of projections uh, previously before the draft had, you know, begun and went underway. Uh, you were projected to possibly go as possibly the first few picks. Were you at all, obviously everything happens for a reason, but at that time, were you at all disappointed that you hadn't heard your name called in the first few picks of the 2020 MLB draft? No, no, not really. Um for me going to the draft, I just really wanted to go to an organization that um, was willing to invest in me and an organization that believed in me. And that's, that's really what it came down to. So um, I was, I did not walk away from that night disappointed about anything. Good. Well, congrats on that selection. It's obviously a huge accolade that you should be extremely proud of um, with many more to come in the future with your very young career thus far. And uh, to kind of transition away from that side of things, uh, obviously you won a national title, like I mentioned earlier, with Vanderbilt back in 2019. What would you say was so special about that 2019 Commodore team? Um, Would you say it was the chemistry between the team, the skill set, or would you say it was kind of a mesh between the two? I mean, definitely – we definitely had a talented team uh, that year, but that I think the chemistry was really what had taken us so far. Um, I mean, when you're able to have such a talented group of players, um, as well as as well as like a great group of teammates, I mean, you're going to be able to have a team that's capable of doing special things, which we were able to do, but. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely the team chemistry was probably our strongest attribute that year, without a doubt. 
Okay. And I had the capability of speaking to both uh, Justin Henry Malloy as well as Harrison Ray. And they both told me about how, you know, competitive it was inside of that Vanderbilt locker room that year and, you know, how that kind of, you know, pushed you guys to the national championship and helped you guys kind of mesh together and bond together and helped you in the long run. Could you kind of attest to that, you know, competitive side of things over at Vanderbilt during your time at Vanderbilt? Yeah, for sure. Um, but it was definitely, a, it was a healthy, yeah. healthy competitive. For sure, which was great because I mean it wasn't like you wanted the guy next to you to do worse. I mean it was both you guys obviously competing for a spot, but in doing so, helping each other get better at the same time, which was great. So it was more. I mean, there's there's definitely times where we'd get after each other for sure, but we it was more more so to help each other out. And what would you say was your most, obviously you had a ton of memorable moments over at Vanderbilt, obviously the national championship, uh, just in general, balling out and making memories over at Vanderbilt in, in Tennessee. Uh, what was that whole experience like at Vanderbilt? And what would you say your most memorable moment while at Vandy was? Um, I mean, my whole Vanderbilt experience, even though it was cut a little short, was, I mean, I couldn't have scripted it any better. Right. Her um, I mean, it, it was great. I, th I thought I got to experience a lot. I got to create a lot of uh, lifelong friendships, which is probably the most important thing out of all of that. But no, it was great. But uh, probably my most memorable moment. Who was a tough one? It would probably have to be that whole... Um, that whole weekend series, my freshman year, super regional against Missouri State. Okay. That was probably the most mentally draining <laughs> baseball series I've ever played. <laughs> and, Up and down it was and how exciting it was. Right, right. And you just mentioned that freshman series. I want to hit on your freshman year a little bit at, over at Vanderbilt. Uh, you made an trans incredible transition from high school baseball to college baseball at the highest level possible, obviously at Vanderbilt being, you know, one of the top colleges as far as both academics and baseball goes. How big was academics for you, you know, going to Vanderbilt and choosing Vanderbilt over, you know, the other colleges that were possibly showing interest in you? Um, to be completely honest, I didn't even know much about Vanderbilt's um, academics. Okay. Until I got on campus. Definitely a little bit of a rude awakening for me, but um, no, I mean, it was great. Like, like I said, my whole experience was great. Yeah, and you made an incredible transition from high school baseball to college baseball at the highest level possible. Um, I, I believe you were in 300 plus. Uh, you were a little bit sub 400 as far as your freshman year batting average goes. How are you able to make that transition so smoothly and quickly and dominate at that level, you know, so quickly in your first year at Vanderbilt? I think it's just my ability to just compete. Um, I think – my competitive, my competitive mind just helps me able to just go out and play and be myself and not necessarily be afraid. You know, um, a lot of people can get into that environment and be intimidated by it. But um, I think my ability at that time to just go out there and play my game and just just play ball, honestly, not worry about anything else, but just playing baseball is probably what helped me um, have success my freshman year. Yeah, and you had the capability of playing in front of tons of scouts and fans in general, a whole bunch of kids that look up to you and want to be in your position one day. How do you kind of handle all of that pressure? Obviously, there was a lot of pressure on you, even in high school and college. Maybe you don't even feel the pressure because I've had a lot of guys tell me that, you know, they don't feel that type of pressure. But how, how did you have the capability to kind of handle all the pressure, even at such a young age? Um, I mean, no, I wouldn't necessarily say it's pressure it's more of a blessing if anything um it's just to be aware of it uh just to be aware that i mean i i guess in a sense that i have the ability to impact people's lives just by doing what i what i love to do and by just being myself which i think is awesome because not a lot of people have that opportunity so i think it's great to kind of have a little bit of a platform in a sense to be able to, to have that ability to do those kind of things and to you know be able to make an impact in your community which is which is great so I mean 
like I said, there's no pressure. It's just, it's just great to be able to have this opportunity. Yeah, I like that mindset. And at what point did you kind of realize that, you know, you had the capability to compete at the highest level possible? Obviously, you know, being selected at a very high level here in this 2020 MLB draft, you know, playing at one of the most prestigious colleges as far as baseball goes, and then obviously dominating at the high school level as well. At what point was there a certain moment that you realized, okay, I could, I could do this as my, you know, career in the future? Um, I mean, I think it was at a young age where I, I would say probably 12 or 13 where I knew that baseball was my passion and something that, you know, I would like to pursue and strive for. But, um, I mean, I would say that probably my freshman year of college okay. um, was probably a, it was probably a defining moment for me just because, I mean, you go from high school and everybody's the best player on their high school team when you go to Vanderbilt. So, just being there in that environment with all these talented players is a little uh, intimidating. So just being able to perform well there is probably when I started to realize, like, you know, if I continue to just stay on this path and continue to work harder, that uh, you know, this might be this might be something that I could really do. Yeah, and you were off to a red hot start. I want to talk a little bit about the 2020 season in particular. 2020 year as a whole is obviously, you know, disastrous for everybody, but in particular, you know, NCAA baseball season because it obviously got cut extremely short. Um, you started 16 games in this 2020 season. How did you initially find out that, you know, the season had been canceled due to the pandemic? Uh, I mean, it all came at once. Uh, things started hitting us. Uh, Kind of towards the end of our that midweek game that we had against Toledo is when we found out that all of our classes were going to be moved to online, which was great to hear, honestly, at the moment. But then um, we were get to the field to start uh, training for the weekend series against Kentucky because we were about to start conference play. And then we find out that SEC gets moved back and then that day – cancel SEC play and then that day, that, that day we're going to cancel the NCAA tournament as well so it all kind of like fell within 10 minute increments so I mean yeah it was literally all all in the on that one day and it was devastating just because I mean for a lot of the older guys in that group they I mean they knew or we knew that that was it like that was the end of our college careers just like that and that's you know things just don't really go out how you script them sometimes, but I mean, you just got to learn it is what it is. And then you just got to move on. Yeah, absolutely. And to kind of transition away from the negative side of things, uh, we were obviously, you know, talking about the draft process a little bit earlier, heading into the week of the draft. What did that whole process look like for you? And, you know, was it a lot of zoom meetings uh, with, with a lot of teams um, previously before the draft had, you know, become underway. And what did that whole process look like for you? Uh, for me, it was pretty quiet. Honestly, I think I maybe had less than a handful of Zoom meetings. Okay. Um, yeah, things were pretty quiet leading up to the draft. Like I said, I didn't really hear much um, <clears throat> going up. Uh, for me, I was just anxious, just waiting just to see how things would play out and just waiting to hear my name get called. But, yeah, that was it. It was pretty quiet uh, for the most part. What would you say you're most looking forward to about being a Blue Jay and, you know, getting getting underway with your pro professional career? Um, I mean, I'm just excited to get to Toronto. I mean, I've heard nothing but great things about that city, and I heard that, I mean, it's it's beautiful. So I'm excited to get there and play in Rogers Center, and, I mean, I'm just excited to start my professional career and just enjoy all those experiences. Yeah, and obviously, you know, for the Blue Jays, that left side of the infield is stacked already with Bo Bichette as well as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Have you had the capability of speaking to both of those guys on, you know, what it's like in the show and, you know, kind of pick their brain a little bit? Yeah, I've had some conversations with them. Um, they've been brief for the most part, but no, I mean, obviously those guys are very talented. So yeah. I've just learned, I mean, through watching them and watching all the other guys that, I mean, everybody operates in a different way. So um, there's things that you can see that a guy does that you might like. But at the end of the day, I mean, you just have to be yourself. 
Yeah, and Austin, I want to wrap it up and kind of transition away from that side of things by talking about the flow. Uh, you're obviously letting it flow a little bit right now. What kind of inspired you to just let it grow and, you know, not 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 have, have a shorter cut? Well, me personally, I've always had longer hair. But, I mean, once you get to Vanderbilt, Coach Corbin has a big policy on shaved faces and sh short, clean-cut hair. So that's probably why my hair might have been shorter. Uh, <laughs> recently but no I mean we're just gonna let it go and see and see what happens okay at what age did you kind of really start wanting to just let it flow and you know was was it just seeing that coming out come out of your hat that really inspired you just to let it go yeah I think I started when I was like six or seven okay yeah I think that's when I when I first started letting it go out and then I don't know I think I started letting it grow out again in high school I think. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well listen Austin I really appreciate you coming on uh I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to make this happen best of luck in the future uh congrats on the, all of the accolades thus far and there's definitely more to come and we'll for sure stay in touch yeah for sure man appreciate you having me on man be easy yeah thank you all right have a good one